All right. Uh, wow. <laughs> I don't know how to put this. I'll put this at the beginning of the video because it was so weird. Okay, I just got done flying with Joseph, 13-year-old um, blind guy. And, uh, yeah, I I didn't know how this flight was going to go. You'll see it. I just got done, but I'm blown away. I mean, I, I, one of the coolest flights I've ever done in my life. So enjoy the video. I You'll see it in the beginning. I, I didn't even really know what to say when we started out because I've never been flight training with a blind kid before and uh hope you enjoy the video uh, we're up uh, north at uh oh, where are we right now we're at jefferson county airport and uh yeah it's uh the beginning of the year 2020 so let's fire this airplane up and we'll get, get going and joseph if you could yell out the window since there's no one make sure you just yell clear and that means we're gonna fire up the engine stand by fire <laughs> all right we got to clear it looks clear, here we go. So anyhow, the, the biggest challenge for me is trying to explain to Joseph how to fly the airplane because I'm so used to saying, look at this, look at this. Well, Joseph doesn't have that facet. Doesn't mean that he's not gonna be a great pilot. It's just, I have to learn how to explain it to him so he understands what I'm saying. And again, it's through either an auditory or a physical stimulation. So that's why today what we're going to go go up and work on straight and level flying. And I have, I'll explain that once we get in the air is how we're initially going to approach that. Um, but I think that's just really the biggest thing for my, my biggest concern, Joseph, in teaching you is that I don't overload you. I don't give you so much information either that you're listening to such as like airspeed or altitude so the the thing that we have to figure out along the way is how can we get that information to you without having so much information coming in so fast that it overloads you that's the one thing that we're trying to avoid how to do so so again today we're just going to go start with the basic stuff and uh i think from there we'll get an idea of what what we can what we can do in order to get that information to you today so again we're not really worried about airspeed today we're not really worried about altitude today i'll take care of that stuff for you but what we are going to work on is the sensory input of what you're feeling of when the airplane turns and climb or turns and climbs and descends and again we'll just use a one power setting we're not going to start messing around too much with the throttle but uh, uh, again I probably overloaded you just taxiing out here if I have I apologize but but uh, anyhow we'll get down to the end we'll just do a quick engine run up and take off and then once we get up to altitude we'll uh, we'll be back with you I just think uh, Joseph I love your uniform that's very cool really I think it's I think it's real snazzy all right here we go you can put your hands on the controls. There you go. Cool. Good job. You feel that when we pull back, how the airplane starts kind of, kind of makes a little sink feeling, and then all of a sudden it starts climbing. You like going up the hill. Oh yeah. I just like flying like you do, man. It's just cool. It's feel vibrating. Yeah. That's this is the that's the feel of the airplane, and that's what you're gonna get. You know that vibration, by the way. Gives a lot of cool. gives a lot of information to you. You talking about the vibration in the airplane? Yeah. Yeah, that gives a, that that vibration will tell you a lot about what the airplane's doing. So, um, and again, that's not today's flying lesson, but that's one of the things that you will learn along the way. All right. So, Joseph, here we are. We're at three thousand feet, right? So you have your hands on the control. Is that okay if I touch you? Kind of. Okay. Cool. Um, yeah, you have a good grip on the control wheel. It's perfect. One hand there, one hand there. When you first take lessons, everyone usually uses both hands, and that's okay. Um, after you f start flying for a while, yeah, I guarantee you'll get into a way where you just start using your left hand. You'll be able to take your right hand off the in off the control wheel because you're going to need that right hand to control the throttle, right? But today, all we're doing is we're going to go straight and level. That means that the airplane's going to go straight through the sky. 
We're not going to go left or right. We're not going to go up or down. That's called straight level. Feel like level. we go around the sun. Yeah, yeah. Do you like, can you feel that sun in your face? It feels kind of nice, doesn't it? Yeah, for January, it's pretty nice. So anyhow, my hand is off the control wheel. So you're flying the airplane, right? We're level at 3,000 feet. So we're just going straight. The airplane's not climbing or descending. And you understand what I mean by climbing or descending. It just means that we're not gaining altitude or we're not losing altitude, right? We're just maintaining 3,000 feet. And that's what the level part is. The straight part just means that we're going straight ahead. We're not turning left and we're not turning right, right? So, what I'm interested in finding out and what's going to work best for you is because I know that you can feel, and we'll go ahead and make a turn, and I just want to give you the turn, well, we're going to make a turn to the left, and I want you to get the sensation of that left turn. So, you, I see you're making a turn, so there goes the left turn, kind of feel, you feel how that, what that feeling is, you kind of, your body kind of moves sideways a little bit now let's go ahead and roll back to the right go ahead and crank that airplane back there you can feel can you feel that sensation of how the airplane is kind of moving through the sky it's not the easiest in flying through <clears throat> through sensation alone it's not the easiest thing in the world to do by just sensing we'll go ahead and just go ahead and straighten her out. A little bit of left control thing and a little bit to the right. Now you just straighten the airplane out. Nice job, man. That's very, very cool. But it's difficult to fly with just sensation alone. It, it just is because, you know, if you're flying along and you close your eyes, a lot of times what happens to most people is when they're flying in clouds is when they have no visual acuity, no perception of where they're at. And it's difficult to fly by what your body's telling you. It, it, it'll lie to you a lot. So what we have to do is we have to figure out a way that you're going to feel these senses, but you also need to know exactly what the airplane's doing. So so what I'm thinking is this. For left and right turns, is that okay if I touch you? I'm going to touch your back. Okay. So what I'm thinking, and we talked about this before, I'm just going to touch your back here, but if the airplane is going straight and level, and I'm touching you right here, that means the airplane's just going straight right because we're just going to work on the left and right part so if i make my hand come over there this means that the airplane's in a right hand turn right so if i drag my finger over i'm not trying to tickle you man <laughs> i know you're ticklish <laughs> but anyhow if my finger comes over here and you feel me tapping you over here that means that the airplane's in a right hand turn right if i go back to the center <laughs> you're going to have to do figure out some way to do it because you're going to keep laughing there it is. but and then if my finger goes over to your left side that means the airplane's in a left turn and when it comes back to center yeah we're going to figure out something out but for today's flying lesson i guess we're just going to deal with the laughter so what we're going to do is we're going to make a turn to the right so right now we're center okay so what i'm going to do is as you start making a turn turn to the right and i'm going to start dragging my finger over and you can tell, okay, stop the turn right there. You can tell we're in a right-hand turn because my finger's over here tapping you on the right shoulder, right? Okay, so let's go ahead and roll out. So go ahead and turn the airplane to the left a little bit. Now my finger is going to come back and be in the center. Now stop the turn right there. As soon as I do that, can you feel that? So now we're in that. Let's go ahead and we're going to turn to the left. Okay, turn to the left. My finger, see how that's working, Joseph, how that... Does that kind of help at all when I do that yes. to help you determine what the airplane's doing? Yes. Okay, so we're maintaining this left-hand turn. The airplane's still turning left, so I'm tapping you on the left part of your shoulder. And now we're going to go ahead, now I'll, I'll go ahead and straighten it out. I guess I should have explained what that means, but go ahead and you can feel the airplane. Now the tapping is in the center of your back, so that means you're flying straight. You're not turning right or left. So let's go ahead and do a turn to the left again. So make it turn. You're doing a great job, man. I mean, Joseph, you're doing a really nice job. Okay, so we're in we're this left turn. So I'm tapping you. We're, we're making this left-hand turn. So the airplane's banking to the left. Banking to the left. We're good. Okay, now go ahead and roll out. 
and I'm surprised I didn't even tell you what roll out means, but you already seem to know what roll out means. So I just, just called it rolling out, and now we're going set straight again. So, so that's okay. So we'll just keep going straight. So I don't need to tap you on the back right now because we're going straight. But how did to you does that seem like a good way for you to feel that the airplane is turning left or right? Does that help you? Yes. Okay. Because can you and if again because this is me and my ideas of what I have but because we're both inventing this together and making this up and trying to get this information to you if you can think of any idea and I'm not talking about right now if you know something right now go ahead and throw it out there but I'm just saying because we're trying to teach somebody with outside how to fly an airplane if you can think of a another way that I can that we could get that information to you would it be better if we had something that came across your chest would you like that better like the top of your chest here or would you prefer the prefer to have that feeling in the back of your shoulders for the, I know you keep laughing so, <laughs> so what what seems to be better for you do you does this bother you as much I know you're ticklish a chest but on your chest if we did it across your chest would that be a better sensation would you start laughing if I do that? <laughs> let's try it. Okay. Well, let's try it. Okay. So here's here's your center. You gotta love your uniform, by the way. This is like the coolest thing ever. So okay. So we're going straight. Let's go ahead and make a turn to the right. Okay. So I'm tapping you. Now we're starting to come over, and you can feel that I'm tapping you farther and farther. So you can feel that bank, right? Let's go ahead and roll out. Start turning to the left, and that starts going to the center. Okay. Now keep turning to the left, and I'm gonna tap you over on this side, all right? And now go turn back to the right, and I'll start tapping you here. So which, okay, and then go ahead and roll out because you're center, boom, you're right there. So you're going, <laughs> you're going straight. Which one of those do you seem to like better? The one that's on your chest? On my chest. On the chest, okay. So that's, so, you know, again, problem solved. We just learned two ways of doing it. I take it you're ticklish on your, shoulder but not so much on your chest either way but you like the sense you like the feeling on your chest that seems to be that seems to get better information to you of whether we're turning right you kind of seem to like that better all right so that's cool well we'll 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 deal with that one one thing again when anybody you know that's watching this we're trying to just come up with ways of how do we transmit this information from an aircraft instrument into somehow via Bluetooth into something that will give you a sensation on your chest for the turning? The next thing is, okay, what about overturning? You know, is there something that we could have that's auditory or that is, if you're turning faster, I'm sorry, Joseph, I'm talking to the camera right now. I'm not talking to you, but you're here listening to what I'm saying. Um, I'm talking to the audience and trying to explain that, you know, because the audience is hopefully going to participate and help us out of a way to be able to des design something and get the information from the instruments to you. And that's that's the whole idea. Um, a couple people that I've talked to already seem to have some pretty good ideas. The neat thing right now, because this, this airplane that we're in, you can take your hand for a sec and feel forward. Feel these instruments, they're all glassy, they're all round. These instruments are all old. You can go ahead and put your hand back on the control wheel. But it's an older airplane, you know? And the newer airplanes have electronics that are able to, that these guys are able to take that electronic information. This stuff is mechanical. It has gears and stuff in it, so it's not gonna really help you. I'm going to take your hand for a second and I'll show you. Just put it out flat. I kind of give you an idea of what 30 degrees of bank is. Yeah, you got the other control. So when you're flying, that's straight and level. The wings are straight, right? When you turn an airplane, that's the bank, right? So this is bank. Straight, bank left, straight, bank right. So when we're turning 30 degrees, here's straight, 10 degrees, 20 degrees, 30 degrees. Well, you we don't want to exceed that 30 degrees of bank because then you see what happens. The airplane gets steeper and steeper and steeper. That's what I'm talking about. Ang that's what I'm talking about in the angle of bank. And that's why I'm saying is we need to get some sort of way to get the information to you 
that you can sense you, you kind of follow what I'm saying is you don't want to turn too steep so we need to design some method that enables you to determine how steep the airplane is because we don't want to turn sharper than 30 degrees so does any of that kind of make sense a little bit yeah. okay cool all right I know like I said man I I, I don't want to overload you when we're flying. It's the last thing in the world I want to do because I know it's a lot of information that I'm giving you. And for me, I mean, you're teaching me how to explain how to fly through a way that I've never explained how to fly before. So to me, this is a challenge. I mean, it's a cool challenge to me. And uh, <laughs> it's a challenge to you as well, man. But I mean, you know, thanks for the opportunity for letting me try and teach you how to fly because this is really cool so you really don't need i think i'm gonna is that okay if i touch you again here i'm gonna touch you on your chest you know when we're going straight you know and your chest i don't think we need something that constantly goes bing 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 telling you that you're going straight i think if we're going straight i don't think you need any pressure maybe you know any pushing like that it's only when you start to turn if you start to turn do a little bit of turn to the right okay all of a sudden can you feel that starts coming in turn back to the left it's going back to the center and when it hits the center i don't think you need to have anything pushing on you on your chest go ahead and turn to the left now feel how that's going now turn back to the right see and once we get back to center i don't think that you need anything that because to me i think that would be annoying if you constantly have something pushing on your chest don't you it, it, I'm thinking that you only need to know the information. Let's go ahead and make a turn back to the right. That you only need to get information that the airplane's turning left or right when it's actually turning left and right. If we're going straight, I, I don't think that you need to have anything that's, that's pushing against you and kind of annoying you along the way, you know? All right, so anyhow, we, we, we touched on, on the turns, right? So the next thing that we need to do is to make the airplane, you know, once you take off, you have to go up, right? So to make the airplane go up, you have to point the nose up. And how do you go up? You you know how to do it. You know, I can tell you've taken flying lessons before. Yeah, you pull back on the controls, right? And then to go down, you just push forward and the airplane goes down, right? Yeah, beautiful. Yeah, I can tell. Season, Mr. Season Pilot over here. Okay, so the next question is, how do we get that information to you that the airplane is going climbing, nose up, or descending, nose down? And is that okay if I touch you on your shoulder? Yeah. Okay. So what I'm thinking is, and again, it doesn't have to be your arm. I'm thinking maybe it's something on your arm. Maybe it's something on your chest, right? That you seem to like the chest. The chest seems to be good information. Okay. So let's say that this is your, your level of flight. You're not climbing. This will be climbing, uh, right? Going up, then going down. That'll be descending. So, okay, let's say right now you're in level of flight. Let's, let's climb the airplane. So go ahead and pull back on the control a little more. And you can feel that the sensation that this is neutral, but now the nose, that's nose up, right? So go ahead and push forward on the controls. We'll bring the nose down. So I'm bringing down, and now the airplane's neutral. I'll help you out on that a little bit just to maintain that neutral flight. So now we're flying around here. The airplane's in level flight. Go ahead and push forward on the controls, and you can see what happens when the nose goes down. Go ahead and push forward a little harder. Good job, man. Okay, so you can feel that. Does it seem like something like that helps you for the pitching, nose up, nose down? Good. Okay, go ahead and pull back on the controls. And now go ahead, we're coming up. So there's a nose up. Let's go push forward for a nose down. All right, let's go ahead. The nose is still high. So now we're neutral. Now we're going nose low. Okay, so, all right. So that seems to work out pretty good. I've got the airplane for a sec. I'll help you straighten it out. That seems to be... That seems to be, a, that, that's, that's, I'm gonna help you out. We're gonna head back towards Boeing Field. Because again, I don't wanna overload you. I just think what we did today is pretty good just for a start. But it seems like 
it seems like the feeling that you like that feeling the best across your chest, right? That seems to be the best way to get that information to you is just having something across your chest, you know, the left right thing goes across your chest and then the up down thing goes up and down your chest. You like that the best? Yes. Okay. All right. Well, that's that's good information because again, you know, it's it's difficult for me to tell um, you know, of what what the best is. I know that, you know, doing the thing on your back, you're just going to keep laughing and that's <laughs> you know, so so we had to go to plan B uh, because, you know, Captain Laughter over here, we got to make sure we get this dialed in. But I think what we'll do is um, I'll see if I can find someone that can design some sort of instrument. And again, it's not a, t I don't think it'll be a tapping thing. I think what we'll do is some sort of, because tapping's annoying. Right? I'm going to touch you. That's okay. Okay, if tapping is annoying, but if it's a, like a vibration, like a I think that would be probably not annoy you as much. I'm just guessing. What, what, do you kind of understand what I'm saying? This is tapping, and then you know what vibration is. It's like that. So I think what we'll do is I'll see what the different, you know, I, I don't know materials-wise, because, uh, again, this is all new to both of us, trying to figure out how to make this work. But what I'll see is and again viewers out there if you guys have any idea of what we can do to make this work um you know man i i know how to fly but i don't know materials or little things that vibrate or how do we design something like that some sort of strap across your chest i don't know um, but if anyone has any input on that man this that's what this whole thing is about you know totally uh I yeah. could say one thing is sure. the sensors on your back, the feeling is a lot less. Okay. Like you can't tell the difference if somebody puts three fingers or one oh, finger okay. on and your back. That's good input. Yeah. Okay, that's great. And I guess the sensitivity on your back versus your chest would be completely yes. different, wouldn't yes. it? All right. Yeah. Yeah, that's very cool. Thank, that's good info. Yeah, very cool. So, again... Uh, yeah, it, it's just a cool thing. So, all right, Joseph, so what we're doing is we're going to go back to land at Boeing Field. That's where this airplane lives, right? So what we got to do is we got to make a right-hand turn. So we're going, I'm going to, is that okay if I touch you again here? Okay, okay, we're straight level. I'm going to make a, go to a right turn. Okay, you're going to the right, going to the right. Now go ahead and roll out. Roll out, we're still a little bit of right turn. Roll out, a little bit more to the left right there perfect now you're heading back towards Boeing field okay so what we need to do is we also need to lose a little bit of altitude so let's go ahead and we were go we're right now we're at 3200 feet and again this altitude thing Joseph we're gonna get into this there's different ways of getting you that altitude information and I'm thinking the best way to let you know what the altitude is is either occasionally the if the altitude stays the same i think it's annoying if it sits there and keeps telling you three thousand three thousand three thousand that's annoying right i mean that would become repetitious and then i think you'd probably tell the thing like hey man like i know you said three thousand like ten times in the last 30 seconds so i think what what we could do there's is a couple ways that I've thought of doing it and one is when you're climbing or descending then it will give you altitude let's say that we're descending right now we're 3,000 feet right so when we're descending the thing will go and it's an automated voice a computer generated voice so right now it would say 3,000 and then as we keep going down it would say, now we're at 2,900 feet, so it's a 2,900. I think something like that, that you just hear, will work for you. Now we're at 2,800. You see how we're descending, we're going lower, you know? Would something like that kind of be, work for you? Yes. Okay, cool. All right. So, and then there's, again, there's a, there's a lot, lot of instruments in here but because today's you're like, all I wanted to find out today is what's going to work for you to be able to make a turn left and right? And what's going to work for you to be able to 
climb and descend when you know the nose is high and the airplane's climbing or the nose is low and the airplane's descending, right? So uh, I, I would call today a highly successful flight uh, in that we determined that getting that information on your chest is going to be the best way to do it, you know? That seems to be the, uh, the way to go. So now the question is, what I got to figure out is how do we design that? You know, so I'll, that's that's my project, right? So next time we go flying, um, uh, hopefully that w we have that designed. And again, we don't have to have it figured out to go flying. Away. If the thing is not built, we're still going to go do another flying lesson. That's just the way we're going to do it around here, you know, to keep you. I think the more that you fly and the more that you get the sense of flying and the, uh, uh, you know, and again, like you were saying earlier, when we were taking off, you made the comment that the control wheel is vibrating and you're absolutely correct and you're like I was saying that's one way to get a lot of information is by feeling what the airplane's doing and that vibration that you feel in the wheel in your hands there's a lot of information that comes to that and and that's what we'll maybe work on the next flight is we'll kind of work with some of the vibrational things that happen but you know, it's it, like I said, it's not easy. Just it's called seat of the pants flying, by the way. You know, when you're sitting on the seat, you know, and your butt feels stuff. Like I'll, I'll show you real quick. I got the airplane for a second. I'll pull back. Feel that in your butt. You can feel it in your back. I just climbed a little bit. Feel that in your butt. Hey, here you go. We're descending. Feel that in your wow. butt. Yeah, that's called seat of the pants. You can feel it in your butt, couldn't you? You feel it in your back, and you feel it in your butt on the seat. And that's why they call it, you got pants, seat of the pants flying. So that's what that is. That's what that's called. Now we also have, I'm going to touch your hand for a sec, but you also have the vibration in the control wheel that you talked about. And so we're going to go ahead on the next flight and we'll start getting into some of the different feelings that the airplane, some of the feeling the airplane will give you to help you kind of determine what the airplane's doing, right? So. Anyhow, we're coming back into Boeing Field. So let me call this guy up and tell him that we want to want to land here, okay? Tower Sky at nine four two on Echo Two Northwest of uh, West Point and down the runway. Number two one Echo, uh, flying towards the stadium to make the straight in for one by one four left to report the stadium. Okay, straight for the stadium one four left and request a long landing one four right. We're down in Southwest Parking. Two one Echo, have your request. And again, we'll get into this phraseology thing, and we'll practice this on the ground before I ever have you talk on the radio. But like I said, it's pretty cool because, you know, you're just telling them who you are, where you are, and, and what do you want to do. You know, you're, our, this airplane number, uh, by the way, is 9421 Echo. So you might as well get used to practice saying that one, 9421 Echo. It's, it's, and it's a Skyhawk. So Skyhawk 94 to an echo because we're going to be doing a lot of flying in this thing so and begin a trainer yeah exactly it's exactly what this is it's a great training airplane you know beginner now well pretty much man <laughs> you know but you know what's cool man is i started flying when i was your age so you're starting to learn how to fly at a good age perfect age to learn no accident in the sky yeah, exactly well you know that's the whole thing is is uh i mean it's just really cool it's fun flying with you man totally I, I, but it's i enjoy flying with you you know i mean you do you're doing a really nice job i must admit i'm surprised at how well you fly already but i like i said you know when i saw you a couple of years ago i know i know you've flown with a bunch of other guys and had an opportunity but now it's time i think it's you know with with you and i flying together is we're just going to hone your flying skills you know so you so you know what the airplane's doing might be a couple of bumps right here like a bumpy freeway <laughs> totally wow we lucked out on the weather today i tell you yeah i know exactly <laughs> totally man no horn on the airplane you don't have to honk out of horn yeah, i know you want me to put a horn on this for you so you, people know that you're coming <laughs> Oh, yeah. Every time you make a turn, just honk, okay? Might be a good idea. Every time I turn too steep. Every time it too, turns too steep. Well, you know, that might be what we have is a horn. <laughs> I, 
I don't know. You know, we're gonna we're gonna figure that out. We and that, might even do audio. Yeah, exactly. Do an audio thing that's saying, yeah, you know, it might say bank. Because you know what they, you know what it says in the big Boeing jets when you turn too steep, it says bank angle, bank angle. So that that <laughs> might well it'd be kind of cool to have some Boeing sounds in a little Cessna, wouldn't it? You know, I think that might actually work out pretty good. Yeah. You know. But yeah, there's a couple different things that we're gonna put. One one thing that I'm having put in here is this thing that's called a radar altimeter, which you never find on a small airplane like this. They're always in big Boeing jets, but it'll help you know when we're coming into land how high off the ground we are. It'll tell you 1,000, and then it'll tell you 500 feet. And then so they say 50. 40, yeah, 30, 20, 10, flare, right? Yeah, and it's got two on Echo Stadium. Two one echo, change to runway one four right, runway one four right, clear to land, long landing approved. Yeah, one four right, long landing approved. Thanks, you're up to it. Cool. Okay, so see now we're going back to there's two runways, one four left and one four right. One four right is the long runway. That's the one that they land all the big jets on, and that's the one we wanted to land on because we're on the north right now. We're coming in from the north, right, and. Uh, we're heading south. The air, airplane's parked on the south end of the runway. That's like, if you if you land on the little runway, if we land on the little runway, we have to taxi for about 10 minutes just to get back to the parking spot. So I just asked the guy if we could land on the big runway, and he said, yeah, man, you guys could uh, land on the big runway. What do you want to land on the big runway? I like the big runway. Why? Because uh, it's... Because, well, number one, it's nice because you just have more runways. Small runways, that's, you know, there's there's small dirt. Okay, plan Alpha. No, yeah, we're going to be, uh, you want us to Bravo 7 for 2 and I go? All right. All right. Yeah, getting a little windy out here. Okay, now, hear this. I'm going to reduce the engine power called reducing RPM. Can you hear that? Engine's getting quieter, right? That's because we want to start slowing down. All right, you can hear you can hear the it's getting quieter and quieter in the airplane. It's oh, big one. It's cuz we're getting, going slower and slower. And again, I think next time we go next time we fly, what we're going to do is we're going to kind of deal like I said with the with the vibration of the airplane and the sound of the airplane. So you can kind of learn what it's like to feel what the airplane's doing. I think that's kind of a good lesson. All right, we're 30 feet, 20 feet, 10 feet, 5 feet. All right, and touchdown. It's pretty windy out. Kind of a breezy. Breezy bird here. How, yeah, how did you like flying today? You like it? Like it. Cool. <laughs> That's the whole point, man. If you like it, I like it. I'm happy. <laughs> you know, it's just cool. You're funny. <laughs> I, can't, <laughs> I can't help that. Why are you too funny? Oh, it just happens, man. Yeah, Boeing Ground Sky Act 2 and Echo Bravo 7 at Southwest Parking. So it's a 2 and Echo Boeing Ground Taxi to Southwest Parking via Bravo. Southwest Park and Via Bravo, two and a go. Uh, yeah, I don't know, man. It's just, that's, I guess, just the way I am. It just happens. Yeah. <laughs> I just laugh, I just like to laugh a lot, man. It's just, life's fun, you know? There's a lot of Most fun, of fun, cool people <laughs> in this world. You're one of them. Your mom is one of them. Someday I'll probably learn how to park the plane. Oh, you're going to, you're, <laughs> yeah. Well, today was your first fly. I mean, you know, I know you've flown before, but today was kind of, as far as I know, your first flying lesson. And again, you know, next time we go up, well, we're going to repeat the same stuff because we're going to do the turn thing and we're going to do the climb and descent thing until you get that, until you're really comfortable with that. And then once you're com really comfortable with that, then we move on to phase two, whatever phase two is. It's probably like airspeed and That's altitude. That's lesson one. Yeah, it's lesson one. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, so yeah, and uh, yeah, it, it, it's very cool. That's fun. <laughs> Man, I've, wanted, I've, I've been looking forward to us being able to fly for a long time. So hopefully maybe next week we can go up again. So I know it would be a little easier in the summer when it's lighter later. But I'm going to shut some stuff up. I'm just leaning across you, okay? Okay. 